Kevin and I are here to talk to you about San Diego Comic Con because obviously that's what you're watching. Toys, toys, uh, us toys, talking about, toys. yeah, it's a toy segment. Um, so what we've got, uh, which hold on, this this will be fun for you to. This is going to make an appearance in one of our upcoming intros. Sweet. But Kevin can play with that. I was just talking of Mr. T. Is this an old one? No, that is. That's that's a, that's a new. Eighteen man. That's rad. So, uh, <laughs> can I keep me distracted while you talk? <laughs> <That's> perfect. <laughs> um, I'll just be playing with this over the side here. <laughs> uh, but uh, I wanted to bring that up because you know, S SDCC is is obviously like a big part of it is toys and of course movie tie-ins, show tie-ins and whatnot, and comic tie-ins. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, no, go, 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 go. Uh, so uh, you're Liam Neeson. Awesome. So, uh, one of the things that, um, there's a lot that came out this week, the Tron figures, uh, and, oh god, I'm blanking on who, the company that's doing them, but they're actually having integrated light, and in some of the, if you've seen the Tron trailer, where mm -hmm. they have the faces flickering in the mask, yeah. and the helmets light up, the toys will actually do that. They so also you, still have the discs on the back? They do. <laughs> like awesome. the classic uh, figures? And, and a lot of them awesome. have the discs, but they're these, like, really, like, hyper stylized like the light piping is all around it's more black than the old so I'm not like the Tron guy on the internet no not like Tron guy <laughs> less, at all less camel toe less camel toe <laughs> or I guess moose knuckle what do you want to call it um, what about Scott Pilgrim figures are there any Scott Pilgrim I have there is there are two Scott Pilgrim figures both plush uh, that that uh, it, it's Scott and Ramona and I think they were SDCC exclusives initially, or at least there's a version of it that are. Um, so there's that. Obviously, Iron Man is continuing to have a popular line, both in six inch and three and three quarter. Uh, three and three quarter, as Kevin is demonstrating here, it's the classic GI Joe Star Wars size. Mm -hmm. It's the big push for everybody. DC has invested in it. Um, they've been doing it for a while, but now there's pretty much from. And, and this is also an example of that everything is available in three and three quarter. The 18 movie, Jack Specific did these these figures, which did not do well. This this is a clearance. Oh really? Five dollars. Really for the Wait. man and the two figures? Uh, no, the, the So you're saying the movie's popularity like is directly cents. related? <laughs> yes, of course. Well, and again, this is a, sometimes they make toys of a property that it makes no sense to make toys of. Um, oftentimes that happens. Well, I mean. But I thought the, Where the, I thought the push lately. Good example of that. <laughs> I thought the push lately was to do the bigger, more articulated figures that cost twenty bucks a piece, or is that just more for the collectors? That is more for the collectors, like the Marvel Select size, where they go from six to like seven inches tall. Those are more for the collectors. Uh, Marvel Legends, which was a really popular line for several years, actually stopped doing figures two years ago. Um, and so the, the ones you see in most comic shops are the Marvel Select series. Um, but, uh... Why do they rebrand? I mean, it's the same thing. It's, it's actually not, because Marvel Select is owned, is actually owned in, in-house by Marvel doing the, the toy biz. Uh -huh. And the Marvel Legends were actually done by Hasbro. And so, oh, it's so kind they... of a, so they stopped it. They worked together for a while, they stopped the Marvel Legends, they're bringing it back this year which people are super excited about because they're hyper-articulated six-inch figures. Mm -hmm. The three and three-quarter is predominantly pushed for, like, kids, and a crossover, it gets kids and collectors because it's a small, portable size. They're much cheaper. Which, again, um, doesn't make sense for this because I think this movie was rated R. Yeah, yeah. I, I have no idea why. Um, yeah. Oh, let's so, get back to actual news, though, instead of me playing with toys. No, that's so, but this oh, crap. is. That's, I just broke the door off, off the 18 No, it, it comes off. By the way, that Murdoch is good for your District 9 action figures. Uh, oh, yes. So, um, so there's that. The uh, Tron figures we mentioned, Thor was revealed in figure form, showing the full, the first way to see the full costume in a three dimensional, which is another. Toys at Comic Con are kind of a big deal because you can actually find out things um, prior to them being released in. You get to see what the hammer will look like most likely, and you get right. to see what. And in the Thor or Loki and you know, yeah, one. yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, Ghostbusters has been a big push for Mattel lately. 
Uh, they have a line. They do a figure every couple of weeks. Uh, they're doing an annual subscription, so you can get every figure from the year. Oh, they did it with their He-Man line this last year. It only for the Ghostbusters, it's six figures. For He-Man, it's twelve figures plus all these bonus figures. It ends up being for the He-Man. It ends up being next year's subscription is expected to be five hundred and sixty dollars. And I've heard that if you get all of the Ghostbuster figures, you get a little piece with it, and they all form a Ray Parker Jr. Uh, nice. <laughs> they are not a collecting connect Ray Parker Jr. That is right just at. Ray Parker Jr. trying to get some. It's actually Hugh Ray Lewis. Parker Jr. taping them to the back. Okay. Everyone remember me. God. Come on, guys. No, uh, but they are. They're, they're, they do a really good job. They look, they're look. they nice looking figures. Um, oh, speaking of that, uh, I did see a, a photo from Comic Con where a guy did. And I'm not a big fan of the steampunk. I think it's overdone. But some guy did the steampunk Ghostbusters uh, oh, uh, the outfit, proton, like, pack? proton pack. It looked pretty cool. It's like that's wood awesome. and brass and everything. So anyway, go keep that's, going there. That's pretty badass. Well, so the other thing is, um, uh, so I've talked about much, much of my my love for the Mego style, mm -hmm. the eight inch cloth costume is fairly plausible figures, really coming back this year um, very strongly. We've got the Flash Gordon movie getting figures, Lost is getting figures, uh, the amazing Venture Brothers cartoon is getting figures, and that includes a Dr. Girlfriend, um, who is essentially Jackie Onassis mm -hmm. uh, visually. Uh, they look stunning, they're really nice. Um, Twilight Zone is getting figures. Uh, Scott Ian from Anthrax is getting a figure because he's a, he's actually a huge. It's weird. He's a huge with, Mego collector with terrible comic book writing action. <laughs> right? Did what? Did he write? He wrote a Lobo series at the oh, same key. That was terrible. Too bad. Uh, well, um, yeah. <laughs> luck, lucky for him, it's not released. Uh, so DC has actually um, been doing retro action figures. You can find them at Toys R Us or on uh, Mattel's website, they're doing a Wonder Woman Mego, which is actually pretty gosh darn nice. Old costume, new costume. Old costume. And uh, the old one, had the original Mego had uh, cloth tights for the skin, skin tone over the oh, okay, yeah. body. This one doesn't. They're using the sculpting underneath. It's really nice. Uh, and then they're doing um, real Ghostbusters action figures uh, from the 90s cartoon in the Mego style. Oh, okay. So, not, so the, not the Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters. Not, not the, the 70s Filmation cartoon. Ghostbusters. Okay, yeah. No, the the real Ghostbusters, which is what the Ghostbusters cartoon had to be called. Oh, that's right. Filmation series. Yeah. Um, the other big thing is actually. Uh, so I mentioned in another segment that they're doing the Green Lantern core cartoon. Mm -hmm. uh, DC does a DC Unlimited action figure line, and they are getting. They're doing a Green Lantern exclusive line, so it's just all Green Lantern figures like one or two a month, um, starting with Sinestro and Hal Jordan. Or, no, I'm sorry, not Hal Jordan, um, Guy Gardner. I will get a Guy Gardner figure. I actually, I always love Guy Gardner. I will get a Guy Gardner. If I can get an entire Justice League uh, International series, I know they did some of those. Um, yeah. I would have Batman punching Guy Gardner. You can absolutely do that. Uh, in fact, there's a webcomic guy who did photos of Batman punching all of his action figures. Nice. So every time he got an action figure, Batman was punching him. Uh, well, they're actually, so they're going to do that. Uh, the four horsemen who do the designs for those are actually designing a new, um, oh, it's either a red or a black lantern. And um, Jeff Johns is going to, they're creating a new one, and Jeff Johns is going to name the character. And then, So it'll be a toy first, and then they're going to pull it into the series. Uh, Justice League Unlimited continues to get toys long after the cartoon has ended. Uh, awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, some good toys. Yeah, check it out. It's always interesting. They do they do some really neat things. Um, we have barely scratched the surface. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot to see, and it's actually some of the best photos you can see of Comic-Con. You can actually just check out some cool toys awesome. uh, and setups. So there you go. Uh, oh, PKE meter. Prop replica. You can buy oh, that sweet. in November. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.